All right, what's the chip of the day? We've got two chips of the day, two for one. Uh, a 2N3904 and a 2N3906. So these are very, very popular uh, transistors. They come in these cute little plastic packages, three legs. So if you look down on the uh, package, it will be a, a D shape. Okay, there'll be a flat, a flat on one side and then a, a roundy bit on the other side. And if you look down at that, there'll be pins one, two, three, or as you look onto the flat face, it'll be one, two, three. And so I've marked one, two, three on the, uh, on the different parts here. And for the 3906, 3904, they are the same pinout, which is really, really handy. It's one, two, three, emitter base collector, one, two, three, emitter base collector. So it's easy to remember those, uh, those two parts. All right. So, uh, I want to do them as a pair because they are complementary. What does it mean complementary mean? Well, they're, they basically have the same electrical parameters. They have the same beta, they have the same voltage drops and all the same stuff. And you can use them in circuits like this. So very, very commonly you see them in some type of push-pull arrangement here where you input a voltage and you output a voltage. And this acts as a current uh, a multiplier. You can get more current out of it. These things will supply the current. And uh, so I said they were complementary. Uh, a 3904 is a 40 volt part, uh, 200 milliamps, and 625 milliwatts total, uh, total uh, power dissipation. 3906, 40, 40 volts, 200 milliamps, 625, they're, they're exactly the same. But one is an NPN and one is a PNP. All right, so uh, we're gonna do it on a circuit over here. I'm going to use a uh, potentiometer. And we're going to have plus 12 and uh, minus 12. Plus 12 and minus 12. Okay. And so we will pick a voltage here and it should send it through to the other side. And as we move the voltage up and down here, we should see, we should see the voltage move up and down over here, okay? And so I have that uh, breadboarded over here, and this is my potentiometer. I'll be able to turn that, and we can have the, uh, the voltage go up and down, and uh, we can monitor the voltage over here. So can I get this all in one camera shot? Let's see if I can do that. Uh, I think that'll be okay, unless I get some glare. Let me uh, turn on my Turn on my uh, meter here. Is that, yeah, that's working okay. All right, so if I turn the potentiometer this direction, you see the voltage going up, and I can go up and up and up and up and up. And let's go ahead and lock the range down so it won't auto range. So we had nine volts there, we'll come down to ground, and then we go to the other side, we'll get negative voltages, and we can go over here to, uh, Minus nine over over on this side, okay. And uh, so, one thing to 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 worry a, a little bit about is that you will never be able to get to twelve volts. There'll be some drop here, okay. So let's see our maximum how how much maximum we can get out of this thing. So we can go all the way to eleven and a half, and in the negative direction we can go all the way to eleven and a half. Surprise, surprise, they're complementary, okay. And uh, so I want to show you another thing, um, which is, let's go ahead and put a load on the output. So right now I do not have a load, a load on the output, okay? So let's add a load. We'll add a load to ground and we'll put in 51 ohms, okay? Because I have a 51 ohm resistor right here next to me. 51 ohm, yes. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set some voltage. I'm gonna set five volts, okay? So I'll turn the potentiometer so that I get five volts. Okay, so I've got five volts now. Now I'm gonna add the load. And you can see that the voltage dropped, okay? And um, that's because these transistors are going to be dropping a little bit of current in them, all right? And in fact, uh, if you go over here and touch these, uh, 
touch these transistors. Whoa, that one's getting hot. Ooh, it's getting hot. Oh, I can't leave my finger on it. It's, ooh, it's too hot. All right. So let's disconnect our load. All right. So there's a couple things going there on there that I want to, that I want to talk about. Uh, one is that the, uh, the 50 ohm, one ohm load is adding, adding a load, right? And we had five volts. Okay. Let's see how many, um, Let's see what kind of load that is. We had five volts and we had 51 ohms. We had 98 milliamps, okay? So we have 98 milliamps, okay? And um, it would be 100 milliamps if we had 50 ohms. <laughs> um, but we have 98 milliamps. Um, and 98 milliamps, when this transistor is drawing 98 milliamps, it's not, uh, going to, it's going to drop more voltage than it would at zero milliamps. At zero milliamps, it won't drop very much voltage, but at 98 milliamps, it will, it will drop voltage. Okay. All right. So that's the first thing. So let's go back to our experiment here. All right. So I'm going to put in the load and it drops, but then I can grab the potentiometer and I can, and I can just put it right back up to five volts. Okay. Okay, so I put it right back up to I put it right back to five volts. So even though, even though it uh, had a drop, I can compensate for that. All right. So when you use these things, a lot of times you will um, have a circuit that looks like this. And you'll want to be increasing the current capability of your um, op amp, okay? And so the op amp will have, let's say you just have a buffer, okay? So you're going to bring the voltage into here. And if you just did this, okay, then whatever voltage here is just going to be the voltage here. So don't do that. Don't, don't put that wire there. Bring your feedback all the way over to here. All right. Now, whatever voltage is here will be the voltage here and it will take into comp it will compensate for all of that stuff that I just showed. If you bring your feedback all the way around to the output, then you'll compensate for all those things or any nonlinearity in the part as well. So if you're building an audio amplifier and you have a big drive section, make sure that your feedback always goes all the way out to the speaker. Um, you want, you want to be able to take out all of the, uh, distortion and voltages and everything. You want to have that feedback come all around, all the way around from the front. Okay. So that's, that's the first thing I wanted to show today. The second thing that I wanted to show today is when I put my finger on that transistor, it got hot. And when you look at those little plastic packages, they don't look like they can handle too much power. Well, how much power can they handle? Well, we just looked at the data sheet and it was six, 625 milliwatts. So how many milliwatts do we have? Okay. So power equals voltage times current. All right. So how much voltage do we have? Well, we had five volts. How much current did we have? Well, we had 98 milliamps. Okay. So we had five times 0 0.098 amps. Okay. 0 0.098 amps is the same as 98 milliamps. So if we multiply these two numbers together, 5 and 0 0.09, oops, 0 0.098, uh, I didn't do that right, 5, 0 0.098 times, we had 490 milliwatts, okay? 490 milliwatts. Now that is at the resistor though. Okay. I just calculated at the resistor. This five volts is at the resistor. That's not what the transistor sees. What does the transistor see? What voltage is on the transistor? Well, we have 12 volts here and we have five volts here. So we have seven volts across the resistor. We have seven volts across the resistor. So now we need to come down to our calculation over here. 
okay? And instead of 5 volts, we now have 7 volts times 0 0.098, okay? So let's take 7 volts, 0 0.098, multiply. We have 686 milliwatts. So that is the power being dissipated in the transistor, 686 milliwatts. Well, what does the data sheet say? 625 milliwatts, absolute maximum. So we are abusing this part. This part will eventually fail. It might not, maybe they're conservative and stuff, but this is certainly uh, uh, overdriving the transistor and that transistor will probably fail. My guess is that it will probably fail. So, um, it's something to, it's something to worry about. And the amount of wattage that transistor will see will de depend on how much voltage we can ha have out here, right? If we, if maybe this is set to, this is set to one volt and we have one volt going across 51 ohms, well, that's no problem. But if we had one volt going across 10 ohms, that is the same condition, okay? Five volts with 50, 50, 50 ohms and one ohm with, one volt with 10 ohms is the same amount of, of a current. And so we will have the exact same uh, wattage. Um, we will have 98 milliamps, but now we have 11 volts across across the transistor and 11 volts uh, times 0.089, right, is gonna be um, 1.1 watts. And that's just way too much. And yeah, your part will fry. So um, yes, sometimes you actually need to do the math. You need to read the data sheet. You need to figure things out. Um, you might figure out the hard way, which is you build a circuit and the part blows up and you go, hmm, I wonder why the part blew up. And then you go back and say, oh yeah, I overdid the, uh, oh yeah, hmm, I was dumb. Um, so uh, when you're designing circuits, you know, there's two schools of thought. One is to um, completely do a spice model and figure everything out and, you know, and everything. And if I was the R&D manager and I saw you doing a spice model for everything, I'd fire you. Um, there is a time and a place for SPICE models, but it's not everywhere. Um, if you're designing ICs, absolutely, SPICE models are the way to go. Um, but if you're just doing some quick circuit and uh, the first thing you do is reach for SPICE, I'm going to say, oh, that guy doesn't know anything, and I'd get rid of you. <laughs> um, so yeah, you need to have some rules of thumb. You need to be able to do these things very quickly, um, uh, especially during the prototype phases and stuff. Uh, or, or uh, in the garage. Yeah, you can run spice if you want, um, but uh, it uh, it's only as good as what you tell it as well. So if you're telling it bad things, it will tell you bad things back. Anyway, uh, there you go. Uh, make sure that you uh, adhere to the uh, wattage uh, of the part and uh, make sure to use the 2N3904 and the 2N3906s as complementary pairs. They work very, very nice together. I believe the 2N2222 and the 2N2907 are also complementary, but I don't know that for a fact. That just seems to be something that I remember. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. Ship of the day.